Teachers, if you prefer to be the center of attention during a lesson, this unit is not for you. But if you like to play the role of a coach, setting up a lesson, briefly explaining the exercises, and stepping aside to let students engage in assignments, this unit probably is for you. This unit is packed with exercises in which students develop their writing skills through focused writing, not through listening to teachers tell them how to write. What this means is that while students are writing, the teacher is freed up to work individually with each student during the lesson. Uh, in this video, I'll describe the unit exercises. You can find a link to this unit, which you can download for free to use with your students. Uh, the exercises take an inductive approach. In other words, unlike a deductive approach, approach in which students are told the rules or given an explanation about how to do something and then assigned to do it in an exercise, in an inductive approach, students first start by working with some examples. This is designed to engage students in the process immediately. From this, students formulate an understanding of, on their own about the techniques or skills being developed. Through the exercises in the unit, students are led to the culminating assignment of writing a four or five paragraph essay with a variety of details. Let's get started. Just like an athletic coach about to start a workout session with his team, you, as the teacher, will want to give your students an idea about what they will be doing in this unit and what the final results will be. This means that for a couple of minutes, you'll be the focus of their attention. This is the first page of the handout, which gives an overview of the unit and purpose of the first exercises. So you can see, um, and this would be a part of the handout and the download that you'll find uh, below, at the link to below. Um, so here's basically what, what we would tell students, um, and you just would briefly go through this with them. So um, we're going to be writing an essay of four to five paragraphs that explain types of things. So in the unit, you're going to practice writing an essay with four or five uh, paragraphs telling about types of things. You're going to be uh, developing, uh, knowing, understanding how to write topic sentences and writing more details to support your ideas. So the first part of the unit will be uh, leading students to write their first draft. And so they'll be, uh, as it explains here, they're going to work with a model, not just read an essay, but they're going to work with a model um, that is an example of the four to five paragraph type essay that they'll be writing. So they'll be choosing a topic after working with the model and then writing their first draft. So um, we're now ready to start this unit using an inductive approach. You'll soon notice that this is very different from how most ESL writing books introduce essays. Most of them will have students read a model essay and then ask comprehension questions about the essay. The teacher then might explain parts of the essay in a brief lecture. Maybe the students will write an outline of that sample essay. You know, this always confuses me. I couldn't see how those steps actually help lead students to understanding how to write the essay. So in this inductive approach, we're going to start by having students directly interact with a model essay. Here's the first steps. First, students are going to just listen to the model essay read by the teacher. As I had mentioned, students will be writing an essay explaining three types of things. Uh, I'm sorry, explaining types of things, also known as a classification essay. The model essay is about types that for this that I'll be reading, to, uh, we'll be reading to the students, the model essay is about types of dreams. 
The information for this came from a news article and students have found it entertaining and informative. Here is what I uh, say. Uh, I'm going to read a sample essay. You'll just listen. After that, you'll be writing this essay. Dreams. I hate going to bed at night because I often have bad dreams. Therefore, I did some research about dreams. I learned that there are some common dreams for people and that these dreams have meanings. In this essay, I'll explain what I learned from my research. The most common type of dream for people is being chased. You are walking somewhere and notice a stranger behind you. So you start to run. Sometimes your legs won't move fast enough. Researchers explain the reason for this. You are in a difficult situation. Soon you will need to make a decision and you don't know what to do. A second type of dream is about school. You dream that you have a test, but you can't find your classroom. Finally, you arrive late for the test. The teacher gives you the test, but you are not prepared for it and cannot finish on time. The reason for this type of dream is that you are not prepared for something in your life. Another reason is that you are in a wrong position in your life. For example, you are a salesman, but you are not good at selling things. Another example is that you are the leader of a group, but you don't really want to be a leader. The third type of dream uh, is about being nude. In this dream, you are wearing no clothes and there are people around you. The reason for this type of dream is similar to the one about school. Researchers say that in your real life, you are not prepared for something. For example, you have to give a speech in your class. You are afraid of making a mistake because people will laugh at you. This research helped me uh, because I can try to understand situations in my life. Also, this information could help other people understand their dreams too. Now, Students are ready to interact with this novel, uh, this model, and through that, they will come to an understanding of the type of essay that they will be writing. So here is exercise one. Now, so they've listened to this, and now here's gonna be exercise one. It starts, uh, it says, close your book and listen to uh, your teacher read dreams. So um, they, we just did that. Then the next step is, after you listen to your teacher, open your books and choose the words from the box to complete the skeleton essay below. So we just finished step one. Now they're ready to complete the skeleton essay. Here we'll look at uh, the, just the first two paragraphs of this skeleton essay. So at the top are the phrases that they will choose to fill in the blank of the essay, which I had just read to them. To complete this, they actually need to think about the ideas in the essay. And they do this individually, not whole class. So uh, here is, as you can see, here's a, the paragraph one through and two. These uh, phrases, they're mixed up and they're going to find which, where they fit in, in these. So uh, here's what they, they'll end up writing. So I hate going to bed at night because often I often have bad dreams therefore I and then they search from uh, the top and they find did some research about dreams I learned that there are some common dreams for people and that these dreams have meanings in this essay I will explain what I learned from my research so they complete the uh, rest of the skeleton essay Something interesting that I have always found when I do this exercise is that as soon as I give the students the paper, some of them start filling the blanks immediately because it kind of looks like a fun puzzle to do. And I have to tell them to uh, put their pencils down just for a, a few minutes or for a minute 
and not to start until I can explain what I want them to do. Uh, you know, it's actually a nice problem to have. It, so it doesn't take much time for them to complete the skeleton. You can see how they now have a good idea about how to organize a classification type essay, which they will be writing. They've gotten good input through listening and reading. They see examples from topic sentence, uh, they see examples of topic sentences and also can see the importance of giving some details to support their topic sentences. And all this was accomplished inductively. In other words, without a teacher explaining it to them. After they have finished, I have them check the answers with a classmate, uh, a classmate or two sitting next to them. Uh, the next exercise is exercise two, and it has a few purposes. It will help them better internalize the structure of this type of essay. Also, it can help them activate some of the vocabulary and phrases that they had heard in exercise one. And third, it's an opportunity for them to do some writing without having to think about their ideas. So in exercise two, it, we tell them now, you've, did you read, you've written that skeleton essay now. Uh, read the essay Dreams again in exercise one, then write the ideas from the essay without looking at it. You're going to use your own words and style. And the key words in the box might help you remember the details of the story. You can use these words if you want to. And this is very important. I'm really make sure they understand that this is not a memory exercise. Write as much as you can remember, but don't worry if you do not remember everything. The more you write, the more your teacher can help you with your writing skills. So as the directions say, they'll be writing without looking at it. So they start by individually rereading what they wrote uh, in the skeleton in exercise one. Then they write the essay. It doesn't have to be exact same as the model essay. In fact, it'll be, the ideas will be there, but it could be a completely different kind of style that they'll be writing. And I tell them, write as much as you can remember, but the, again, don't worry if you don't remember everything. And in fact, I'll say, if you can remember only one sentence, I'll read that sentence. And if your grammar is correct in that one sentence, I'll let you know. And so usually they'll, they'll smile because they know they can write more than one sentence, but that takes pressure off. And I tell them, you know, I'm not gonna give you a grade for this. It's, it's, a, it's a good opportunity to uh, write something and help me help you with your, your grammar skills in general. So needless to say, it would be really hard for most students to remember many of the details of this essay. So we give them some key phrases that will help them when they uh, st start trying to write it. And, um, and, and they can use these if they want. They don't have to use them. They don't have to use all of them. They can use however, uh, whatever is gonna help them remember uh, the, uh, the details of the essay. And of course they do this on another piece of paper. So after students have finished writing their paraphrases of the essay with as many details as they could remember, I tell them to check, uh, carefully check their grammar before they give it to me. As you might have guessed, some students will finish quite a bit sooner than other students. So you might wonder, what do you do with these students who quick, who finish uh, faster than the others? You know, what are they going to do? They just start goofing around or what will they do? So we, uh, um, I always explain uh, after I explain what they're going to do for exercise two, they're going to write this, uh, but I tell them don't start yet. Um, I say, don't start paraphrasing the essay yet. I want to tell you what to do after you finish the essay about dreams. So I tell them, look at exercise three. This exercise is about listing ideas for an essay topic, and you can just follow the directions. So again, exercise three is intuitive, uh, is inductive. Students learn what to do 
by interacting with the samples, not by the teacher telling them how to do it. So there, it's uh, uh, exercise three, they're uh, to give them uh, a samples instead of saying, okay, here's some examples of what I want you to do. Read these examples and then you're going to do the next exercise. I want them to interact with these examples. So we have uh, some phrases again, mixed up in the box at the top, and they're gonna fill in the blanks um, of these uh, uh, outlines, all right? So there's gonna be a topic, uh, types of things that, and then there's going to be uh, some supporting, uh, uh, support with them, okay? So you would see the, the first one is, uh, uh, if you look very carefully there, you can see types of things that, and you look, number one, first, children become frightened of things at night, ghost, strange sounds. And so um, you look in the box at there, and we can see types of things that frighten children. So they would fill that in. And the second, children become blank, such as dogs, cats, and birds. And if we look at the top there, we can say, see, children become frightened by animals and they fill that in. So they've really got to be kind of thinking about what are the ideas here. Um, they can't just read through them. They're, they're actually thinking about this and this is a way to get them focused on it. So, the, um, uh, and then B is a, another one, types of students in my high school. And so we've got some there and they're gonna have to fill in number three, the third type, they'll fill in that blank. So I, um, for this little video here, I'm not including uh, C through E, but those are on the worksheet, um, and the documents that you can uh, download. Then we're gonna get them ready to start thinking about the first essay that they are going to write. And so we have uh, some uh, choices um, and, uh, in this box and they're gonna choose four of them and they're going to write a list of ideas for each topic. So because they did the previous exercise, uh, they, they now have a pretty good idea of what, what we would like them to do for making a list of ideas. So the types of things, these are topics, um, types of things that frighten children, uh, types of things that students worry about, types of students in my high school or college, types of vacation, types of crimes, types of pets, types of parents in my country, types of teachers in my high school, college, types of families in my country. And then you can see this, uh, the bottom one, types of blank. So they can come up with their own that they might want to write about. But I always tell them before you do that, make sure you talk to me because uh, some things just don't quite work. Uh, so they're going to choose four of these and then they're going to write some uh, uh, list of ideas for each of them. So I give some examples there, things that uh, airline travelers worry about, and I show them how I want them to do it. So um, now they are ready to work individually. Uh, first, they write their paraphrase uh, of the essay about dreams, and as they finish, they can just step right into exercise three and four without me having to stop everybody and explain. They, these are all done uh, individually and they and inductively. Uh, now here's an added benefit to this process. While students are working individually on these assignments, you as the teacher have an opportunity to work individually with any of the students. So for example, um, I you know will mark homework assignments from uh, the previous uh, uh, from the previous day or maybe from an essay that they had written um, a while ago and that they are now working on correcting any mistakes that I have marked. And so this is a chance for me to sit down with any of them that would like me to look at their corrections and uh, conference with them and help them. And so uh, I don't need to take up time outside of class to do this. I can do it right in class. I'll just sit down maybe in the back of the class or in the front and then they can, as they uh, want, uh, if they want it, they, they, they'd be working on their little paraphrases or making their lists, or they can come up and talk to me um, uh, and get any help on previous assignments. So I'll include uh, a link below about how you can organize a writing class into a workshop just like this. If some students aren't able to complete the paraphrase during the class, 
um, you can let them finish at home. Don't worry if they look back at the essay. Most of them understand the purpose of this assignment and won't do that. But if they do, it's not a big problem. Don't worry about it. Next, after students turn in their paraphrases, there are some options for you. You can, um, after class, mark the, the grammar, and I'll include a link below of a good technique for leading students to discover their grammar mistakes. In other words, you don't just go through and just make all the changes for them. There's a way to lead them uh, for them to discover their mistakes. And you could do this, or you can just do this. You don't have to do both of these, but you could highlight the good parts of their paraphrases. Way, sentences that they wrote well or details that they included that were good. And again, I'll include another link uh, below to show you um, how this, how you can do this, and how, how well it works. Either way, um, you'll want to indicate somehow on their paper, you don't want to just take these papers and file them away. You want to indicate some way and let the students know that you read their, uh, their paraphrases. Um, so at this point in the process, students understand the structure of this type of classification essay. Um, they, don't, uh, they have chosen a topic and listed some ideas for it, and they are ready to write exercise five, which is their first draft. So in exercise five, number one, prepare your, to write your essay, choose one of those four topics. So they had four topics and they've listed ideas now. Choose one of those uh, that you made in exercise four and then write your first draft of the essay. Uh, okay, and then I'm t we're telling them, uh, you, you're gonna keep, or, you know, we, we wanna keep this essay uh, and we're gonna use it to write our final draft later, okay? So the next class, the, um, if you want, you could have them turn those, these essays into them. You don't do anything, you put them in a file, you don't mark them, there's no reason to mark them, you just put them in the file for now, all right? Uh, over the next few classes, you'll want to help them learn techniques that they can use to improve these first drafts when they write their final draft. So the techniques I'll show you here continue to be taught using an inductive approach. So the first one involves topic sentences. To introduce this uh, in exercise six, they refer back to the skeleton essay about dreams that they had filled in uh, the blanks for in exercise one. They merely write the first sentences of each paragraph, which are the topic sentences in this essay. And again, notice students are learning by interacting with the material rather than listening to the teacher lecture about topic sentences. So here is what um, they wrote for uh, paragraph two. So they would copy into the chart the first sentence, in other words, the topic sentence. So the most common type of dream for people is being chased. You are walking somewhere and notice a stranger behind you, so you start running. So the topic sentences for paragraph two is the most common type of dream for people is being chased. And they would just fill that in in this chart. So one common problem students have um, with writing supporting sentences in a paragraph is including information that is not related to the topic sentence. And so in exercise seven addresses this problem. I'll include a couple of paragraphs here, but in the downloadable exercises, there are four paragraphs. So uh, in exercise seven, we start, the first thing they're gonna do is in these um, uh, paragraphs, they're gonna underline the topic sentence, and then they identify each sentence. Is it about the topic, about the topic sentence, or is it not about it? Okay, so you can see the, the first one, um, the summer is a great time for playing sports. And then there's uh, one, two, three sentences there, and they're all about playing sports in summer. And then the next one now, so that's their sample, except for, oh yeah, uh, the, the, I'm sorry. So the sentence one, swimming, the second one, mountain climbing, those are about the topic, but then look at the third sentence. Ice skating on a river is also enjoyable. We could say that's not about the topic. So that's a weakness in that paragraph. So that's the sample. Now they're gonna do uh, number one. And again, there's one sentence that's not about the topic in this. So my brother has a lot of problems with money. 
And so they read each of these and they tell us which one it is not about the topic. And then the number two again. So again, this is through an inductive approach. They have discovered how supporting ideas need to be connected to the topic sentence. And to reinforce topic sentences and connecting ideas, we have them do exercise eight in which they choose one topic and just write one paragraph. They can choose any of these. And then they uh, write one paragraph and they're, they're, they understand now how it has to be connected to the topic sentences, to the topic sentence of the paragraph. So now we are ready to help them learn how to develop their ideas more. We don't want to merely say, you have written your first draft now, write again with more details. That, that's just not helpful. Some teachers will meet individually with uh, uh, each student um, and then read through their first drafts and try to give them suggestions on how to improve their next draft. That really isn't helpful either because it's not showing students techniques that they'll be able to use in the future writing assignments. You know, it might help them with this assignment, get some ideas, but it's not gonna help them for the future. Also, you know, that's very time consuming for teachers and it's labor intensive to do that kind of a process. So most students just, uh, when they write their essays, they tend to just write general information as support about their topics. So we'd like them to expand their options and write other types of support. Again, instead of lecturing them about this, we have them do exercise nine to introduce this. And for this, uh, I read directions and give them two minutes to complete it and then have them check with a classmate near them. So this is uh, exercise nine, types of details, general information and story slash experience slash example. And so they're just gonna read these sentences and they're gonna identify what type of support that were um, each of these sentences. So like number one, last week, and my brother lost as well. That's uh, a story, uh, or G. I'm sorry, number two. Uh, if we lose our wallet, we might have some problems. That's general information. Number three, Hollywood is a great place to live. We can see, well, that's general information. Uh, number four, Hollywood is a great place to live. For example, there's a chance to get a job in a movie. And so there's S, a story uh, or a story or an experience. Okay, so they do those and next they are ready to apply this to a short essay. So I assign exercise 10 for them to work on individually. In this exercise, they juxtapose two essays. One uses just general information, the other includes a story, experience of, uh, and examples. So um, you see the first one is uh, about dogs and they just read through these after every sentence they tell us, was this general information or were there uh, examples and stories? And then so exercise, then sample two, we have um, the same thing. They go through every sentence. And in this one, you'll see there's gonna be some times when they uh, use examples and little stories, okay? and they identify each of those. So this is really setting them up for just the type of essay we'd like them to write with a lot of variety. So the, uh, the culminating step here is to help them raise their awareness about how much more interesting an essay is when it doesn't just contain general information. So exercise 12, we say answer the question about dogs one and dogs two, which essay is more interesting to read? And of course, everybody says dogs too, because it's got examples and stories. So the technique we want them to apply in their next draft is using a variety of support. And we assign exercise 13, 14, and 15. And again, no lectures. We don't have to lecture. We just explain the directions and they develop this technique inductively. So uh, types of support, examples, story, Describe a specific person in exercise 13. And read the topic sentence and support for each paragraph. And then they fill in the blank, telling us what type of support is used in that paragraph. And they can have one of those three types.
So you can see um, number one is the example, and I go through this with them. Uh, Mondays are difficult days for many people. My brother often goes to bed late on Sunday nights, so it's hard for him to get up early on Monday mornings. Usually he has just enough time to drink some coffee and eat some toast before he rushes out the door. So of course they, they look at the top and in the example it says describe a specific person. Okay, so they do that for um, all these paragraphs and they choose what type of support is used. And again, this is all individually. Then they're going to uh, do exercise 14 and they're going to choose four of the topic sentences below and then they're going to add support for each of those of them and they're going to try to write um, using uh, an example uh, a story or describe a specific person just like they uh, saw in exercise 13. then we have uh, a culminating exercise here where it's exercise 15. Uh, they're going to choose three topics and in this, they have to come up with their own topic sentence for each of those paragraphs and then write once uh, a support for them, just like in the examples above. So in addition to teaching techniques for support during this unit, we work on some grammar as aspects like noun clauses, gerunds and infinitives, some verbal phrases. We even do uh, some grammar groups where they're in groups of threes and um, do some grammar things. And again, we do all these inductively. And I'll include more about these uh, in the link below. So, uh, but for here, since we're focusing on, uh, I, wanna, I wanna focus on developing uh, just the essay. Um, I, I, I'm not including them uh, in here in, during this discussion. So now we're almost ready to write uh, the second and final draft. But first, we want to uh, we want the students to interact with a second model. So um, this is uh, part four, and um, so as you may remember, the first model was about types of dreams. Uh, this one is about types of personalities, uh, namely introverts and extroverts. And to introduce this we had them fill out uh, a brief personality questionnaire just to get them uh, kind of interested in, uh, in giving a little schema for the uh, topic. So uh, exercise 37, uh, there's just a, uh, uh, a questionnaire that they'll write. And, um, and then uh, exercise 38, uh, after they've done that, they'll tell us how many letter A's did they choose, how many letter B's, and then this will show them whether they are extroverted or introverted. So it's a kind of a fun way to uh, introduce them to what this little essay is gonna be about. So for this model essay, we don't start with a fill in the blank skeleton like we did with dreams. Instead, we're just going to read it to them and we'll read it more than once. And then we just have them write the essay, including as many details as possible. And again, we give them some key phrases to help them remember. So uh, this is exercise 39 tells them, uh, you know, look at the words in the box below, close your book. Uh, and then the teacher is going to read the uh, little essay. After they listen, they open their book or um, open up the, and uh, look at the uh, paper and write as many details as they can about those four paragraphs and they can use those keywords if they want. And then after they've started write, uh, after they've, I've given them a few minutes to write, I'll stop and, and then I'll read it again. And maybe I'll do that a third time. And again, I remind them, this is not a memory uh, exercise. Uh, again, if they can only write one sentence, I'll read that one sentence and tell them how well they did. So the key words are all there. And then um, just, just to give you a, a sense, I'll just read the first two paragraphs. Uh, and again, you'll notice that the second paragraph starts with a clear topic sentence and it includes those types of support that students have practiced, namely giving examples, describing someone and experiences. So uh, here it is. And this is what they're, they're just going to listen to this first. All right. Personality types are an interesting area in the study of psychology. Psychologists can put people into two groups. 
These are extroverts and introverts. This essay will describe those two types of personalities. Extroverts are the first type. About 75% of people are extroverts. Extroverts get energy from talking to people and doing activities with people. For example, some extroverts will leave a party at 2 a.m. and have energy to go to another one after that. Extroverts feel lonely when they are not around people. They like to be in large groups and prefer to work with other people. They enjoy talking about their experiences and will tell their opinion quickly. So th those are the first two paragraphs, of course, the, the introduction and then paragraph uh, the, uh, of the body, the first paragraph of the body, type, topic sentence, extroverts are the first type, and then there's details about it. So I, I, with my students, you know, I would uh, write, probably read slower than I just did there. And, but I would read it all through, maybe read it through twice and then have them write and after a few minutes stop, read it through again. So again, as with the first model, I tell them I'm not going to give them a grade, but I'll help them with their grammar. Now, after they've done this and they've handed it in, um, and again, I can mark the uh, grammar or I can mark uh, the, the, the good points. Um, but I somehow give them feedback that I did read it. Um, now they're ready to write their second or the, uh, maybe it'll be their final draft. So I return that first draft which they had written in exercise 40. And the directions then are um, telling them uh, in exercise 5 earlier or above, you chose one of the topics in the box below and wrote the first draft of the essay. And I remind them of what the topics are. And then um, we're going to tell them now we're going to write your second draft and try to improve the content. Now they've got all these techniques. They, can, they, they, they know how to write good topic senses. They know how to write um, a, a variety of support. So it gives them a really good reason to write a second draft. So in the first paragraph, write an introduction with a thesis statement. And then paragraph two, write a topic sentence uh, with some details. And just like we practiced, same paragraph three, same topic sentence details. Optional, if they have more that they'd like, more uh, uh, on their list of ideas, they can write a paragraph four. And then uh, they could write a, the conclusion at the end. So that's the complete unit. If you, like many of us, believe the way to learn writing is by writing, then the approach in this unit should appeal to you. Throughout, students get a lot of focused writing with many opportunities to get teachers' feedback. Also, there is a variety of input through listening and reading. You know, I know some uh, writing teachers seem to dread getting a stack of essays to mark, but for teachers who have used this unit pretty much across the board, they find reading these and marking them very stimulating and rewarding. You know, we can see where uh, our students' writing has, at the start of the unit, what it was like when they wrote that first draft and how much they've been able to improve both the content and style by the end in just uh, you know, a week or so. So again, among the links below, you'll find um, also some uh, sample evaluation form that you could use after you get their, their uh, final drafts back. And um, uh, you might want to do some peer editing. Um, and I'll give you a link where uh, there, there's some suggestions for how you can do that. So that's all for now. Um, Till next time.